Okay, uh, so tonight I am going to talk about how to write CLA commands for Drupal 8 using the Drupal console. So maybe if you are not familiar with Drupal console, Drupal console is a CLI uh, sponsor for this organization, uh, we know and access and Indaba. And right now we have almost half million downloads in the last two and a half years. Uh, so it's a, it's a decent number compared with other products. And we are uh, hoping getting 500, a half million uh, downloads for the next two, day, uh, two months. Uh, we are in our current version is release candidate 16. So we hope by the before the Drupalcon Baltimore we will get a stable release. We are working in the latest details to do that. How many of you heard about Drupal Console before? How many of you use? Oh, okay. So maybe some downloads are in are you, right? Okay. So maybe you don't know. So we know is the is a new company I just started is specialized in provide consulting in USA for, for now especially for training and we are uh, in the process to create a couple products as a software as a service not yet in beta but soon and by the way I am running uh, for the Drupal elections coming next month this is an election to elect a director at large so if you if you want to participate please to try to read my my profile and check the ideas I have to try to bring to the Drupal Association as an organization. So you can contact me in the Twitter account we know INC or in N Solutions in Twitter, Facebook, GitHub, or everything. Okay, so let's talk about Drupal Console. Um, in the past, when we started Drupal Console, was as an application because we are based in Symfony console, right? So we are a Symfony 2 application. Um, and we are we are not migrate to Symfony 3 because the Drupal dependencies. It's Drupal A is still use Drupal uh, Symfony 2.67, something like that. So until Drupal 8 or Drupal 9 migrate to Symfony 3, we will be able to migrate to Symfony 3. It's not because we want, it's, it's a, a requirement. So we were an application to work as Tata Learners alone, but in order to try to get more um, power in terms of the workflow and how to use Drupal, now Drupal console must to be in installed inside Drupal 8 as an dependency. In the same way you install Gossel or many other dependencies in Symfony. So uh, Drupal console right now is just a sy another Symfony dependency. So it must to be installed per side. And this is good because even if, if you have in the same server many different Drupal 8 versions, that means you will get a Drupal console version that match the requirements of your site. So how you install Drupal? If your Drupal is already installed and you have Composer, right? I know there are some hostings or servers that allow you to download Drupal 8 uh, without Composer. But it's, it's like a, it's, it's, it's like it's using Drupal in that way you are used, you are not exploring all the potential you have with Drupal 8. So the S Composer provides you a lot of things. So if you install Composer, even if you don't install with Composer, uh, just run that command and that will be download Symfony Console and all dependencies required by Symfony Console that are not installed in your system. Right? But if you are new in Drupal or you are going to start a new project and uh, you could run this project, it's a recipe from Composer that will download Drupal 8, Drupal Console, Drush and many other things and configuration in one single command. Actually that will not install but that will be download everything and then you could use the web UI to, don to install or you could use <coughs> Drupal Console to install. Okay, 
So after you install Drupal, obviously you uh, Drupal console you want to install. So depends on your installation, you have a couple ways to 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 execute. As I say, we uh, the the Drupal console is installed as a dependency, but a, a scene link is created inside vendor folder, like a vendor bin Drupal. Done. You you will execute Drupal console. Or if you want, if you are inside the web directory, you could use obviously the dot dot slash to locate the file to download or more deep if you are inside like uh, in the custom uh, modules or if you don't like to do this that that slash that that slash that that slash and to the end of the universe the universe you could use an, a package we call uh, a launcher so this is a drupal console launcher so what it is is a global executable so this is another symphony 2 application that will detect if you are trying to execute this inside the Drupal installation. So even, it doesn't matter if you are how deep inside Drupal, they will recognize and then will find the binary to execute the Drupal console for this specific site. So this is uh, avoid you to have a lot of typing, so it's good for your meta calper team. So how you install? We have an installer in our website, so you just need to use Core or WGET if you don't have, if you use Linux. Well, you have Core in Linux, but if you don't have Core, you can, obviously you have WGET. So that will download a FAR file. Then you move to your binary folder, wherever it is, we just suggest in this location, you make this executable. And it's not visible here, in a way, in the projector. But then you need to run Drupal init. The Drupal init is like a, the first command you need to execute in the console to try to use again more potential that is available. I will I will explain to you later. So the Drupal init will be create a console folder inside your product or your pro, your project or inside your user folder. Okay. Um, before to continue, if you have any question about what I say or about whatever you heard about the Drupal console, we, I can try to resolve, no? Yep. Okay. So tonight I want to explain you, because Drupal console, let me show you here. So if I am going, maybe you don't know, but if I run Drupal console outside a Drupal installation, I will be running the Drupal console launcher, right? And if I run Drupal list, I will get a few list of commands. Maybe this is the, the green is not. I will explain. Okay. This is a few list of commands. So it's not the full list because obviously the Drupal launcher doesn't detect as a Drupal. But still, you could play around with YAML files. You could debug a site, the, the site configuration, install Drupal, and some other things. But if you are inside, A Drupal 8 folder. Okay, this is okay. This is a, a typical Drupal 8 folder, and you run again Drupal list. Now you will get a lot of more commands to interact with your Drupal. So maybe the most popular part for developers is the generalization, right? But obviously the other commands they had their their own function. So depend on the user you use more. So in this case it's because Drupal console say, ah now I am inside a Drupal, so now I could execute more and more, right? But what I want to talk about you is how do you extend Drupal console in your benefit? And when I say your benefit is because in any company or any organization. Uh, we have our own workflow for development, for deployment, for whatever you want. And obviously these tools could answer all the, necess the necessity of the company. So you have to have the option to try to extend to mold the solution for your company. So for this reason, we provide the option to create commands. So a command basically uh, have an uh, initialize section is optional. 
we have an interact section which is optional and we have an execute section which is mandatory right that's it it's typical it's, it's not rock science so in Drupal console we have create commands inside the extension and we call it station because when you get in Drupal 8 the first thing that you notice change from 7 to 8 is now we have the menu extend right because we have extensions now so in, 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 in technically a module and a term both are extension of a different type but both are extensions and profiles they are extension of type profile so the idea is you could create and execute commands inside teams and inside modules and inside profiles so right now uh, we could run in, uh, inside modules and teams and the profile is in development we hope we could release that in the next two weeks because this is in, in a roadmap to try to get stable for release okay so how I uh, what is the first option to generate a, a command a custom command uh, inside a model or a team so if I run this maybe, maybe I don't know if you, you execute a com uh, create a model before with the console but This is a command executed and uh, in line with all the options to generate a model named Gent uh, with the title Gent Camp. And then we get this. So if, if right now I am going to, or I could, I could check here. Let me maximize this. No, this is here. So if I go to web models custom, now I have my model again with an info. So obviously it's not too complex, but it's a model or, uh, already uh, useful for Drupal 8. Okay? So we have a command, we have a holder to try to insert a command inside there. Okay? I will share it later the uh, slide so that you can do the same I did, copy, right? And execute. So now we want to create a custom command, something we want to implement. So I am going to say, I am I, I want to generate a command inside the extension GAN, which is a extension type module, and we want to generate a class default command, and the name of my command must to be named GAN default, and I want to inject a service inside my application. Okay. So I am going to generate this, and if no, ah, no fail, eh, works. <coughs> so now, yeah, live demos, live demos, that's all good of our problem, so. So we have three files, we, we have our command, now we have a service, and we have a default. Okay, let, uh, uh, it's my current dependency. Okay, so let me, let, let, let me review before to show the code. So one of the things to enable console to detect services is like our commands, internal or external, all our services, like a symphony services. So we create inside the model, in this case the extension, a file console.services.jamal. Why we don't use the services Jamal inside the model? It's because like a one year ago, we have a conflict with Drush because they use that service um, we started to use services like a two and a half years ago but they start to use like year one year ago and they use the same tag we use and then our commands broke drush for some reason so we decided to create a separate file and we call console services jamal that means this file is inside your model but don't affect the performance of your Drupal or your model because it's never processed for the UI in web. It's only internally you have Drupal console, right? So it's innocuous in many ways for, for anything else. So it's just some bytes in your file system if you don't have the Drupal console. So, but the format is the same as services YAML file of any model or composer file. We have a service key in a YAML file we have the, the ID for uh, the services we want to generate. We need to provide the class that will be 
loaded when you execute the service. We, we could provide arguments in, in case you want to do dependency injection. So this line is, the, is dependency injection. If you, are, if you don't use dependency injection in the past, that's it. <laughs> Right? That's the dependency injection. Because the concept the concept of dependency injection sometimes is too easy and too complex at the same time. But dependency injection is just in Drupal or Symfony we have a container and container maybe is a fancy word to say it's an array with a reference for classes, objects in this case, right? And you could use one class or one element in that array whatever you want. So in this case they say, okay, in this array is one element with the key entity manager, and then take that object and send as argument to the class we define here. And that is dependence injection. Right. And then we have tags with the team. So uh, Drush, for instance, they, they, they have console command in the past, so we changed to Drupal command to avoid any conflict. That's it, but the principle is the same. So in our case, the module what we generate this is this is the module the module. Uh, I am trying to increase this. Why is not increasing the size? <sighs> well, this is the service file. Let me show you the other file. Okay, the second file what we get is a file for the class where our command is secured. So this. Don't worry, all this code was generated for the command. So obviously we need to define an NS space. This is something, this is, this is one of the things maybe that you, people love Drupal console because when you bring for another framework or for even for Drupal 7, just the concept of NS space could be a little confusing. Like I am creating my new model, why NS space I need to use? Uh, I say because I suffered that at the beginning too. So it's just easy, it's just the Drupal because it's the framework we are working, the GAND is the end of the module and all in this case for commands and in the in command. And we need to use the classes uh, required to, to run a command. As you could see, the first three are from Symfony because again, Drupal console is a Symfony application. But on top of that, we build our own classes to try to do the things we need to do in Drupal. <clears throat> the last one is the services we injected. So what we do in Drupal is um, in, in interactive mode, you could select what, how many services you want and dynamically the code is generated to be able to instance the, the services of the objects you executed. <clears throat> we use annotations as a method to try to detect some internal things for the console to try to determine the extension and the extension type. And we use annotations to try to maintain the class as much as possible close to the Symfony console uh, command class, right? So uh, in this case, we do some internals. So, but if you see a Symfony console command and a Drupal console command, they are like a 95% the same, except for this. <laughs> this is the only thing we need to build. So obviously you declare a class and one thing we, need, we, we, use, we create to try to facilitate the, the development of commands, we create a command trait that provides some, some pre-created pre methods to use in your system. <clears throat> so this is the comment or <clears throat> documentation for the services we choose. Now we have the constructor to use the dependency injection. And we have a configuration. So the idea is you could name your command in the way you want to name. And you and obviously the generation the, the generation creates some configuration, but the idea is you, you extend, you edit and modify the configuration. And the last part is the execute. In this case, it's only is uh, this is only a, a printing inside the console. Uh, but let me show you. So the idea is now we need to install our model, right? So if I go to my ah, to my Drupal installation, I go to extend. Um, 
I have this model, right? Again, can't. But I don't like to do this. I am going to do this. So I install my module. And if I install my module, in theory, I will have my, my custom command available. The way to check is just run Drupal list. And then we get the list. And let's see if we see something related. Uh, this, where is, what is the name again? <laughs> Sorry. Is, no, this is the application. Uh, let me close this. This is the source, the command. The command is Gantt. Okay. If you don't see, maybe it's your cache. Let's see. Okay. So we, ha we have our command. Okay. Yeah, this is your best friend. CR stands for Costa Rica, right? <laughs> Sorry, you don't have a BAE command yet. But you could create. So I, if I execute this, I could say Drupal execute GAN default or GAN default. And then I get a new command. Hey, I am a new generated command. So obviously this is too silly and it's probably you want to extend your command so you could create an action. So I am going to do the same. I am going to include the use necessary in my code. Uh, and now it works. So I am going to modify the class we just generated. And I'm going to put it there. Doesn't matter the location. But for user style sake, maybe here is better. I don't know. And I am going to add an action. Okay. So this is the uh, the name, no actions. And I am going to add this auction. And I could use some translation internal, but in this case, I just will to use node ID. Okay. Now I have an action. So how we test that? If works, we just run the command with that dash hell. And now the command will say that we have a new auction and an ID with the, the, the value we get, right? So we could uh, start to create more some more, more logic. So let do something different. So I will use the node ID to use Drupal functions to load my node. So I am going to copy this inside the execute function. It's pretty straightforward. I get the auction from the Symfony console. I am going to use the entity manager to say the auction will be the node I am going to load. If the node is not found, I will say it's invalid node and if it works, I will try to provide the title of the node. Okay, so to execute, I will I will show you this. Let, let's execute first. So I am going to execute again, and I say no ID seven. And now we get a new command name it Benet because this is the model. So now I am interacting with the Drupal console. In this case, to fetch information. But now imagine is you are running a e-commerce stuff and you need to do some reorganization of pricing or whatever so obviously you could do this some a script to do that and it will be more simple for you right or or, or for the booking and without affecting the, the performance or of, of your website <laughs> if you check for instance if you don't load drupal commerce 
Drupal commands, they have their own Drupal console commands to do some operations inside their store. They, they build, we don't build. They did, and they use this to try to, to, to do their product a little more powerful than already was. Okay, so now, now let's do, try to do something in benefits of the newest. So people who maybe it's not um, too fancy in, 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 in common line. So I am going to I am going to include the interactive mode. So all I need is to send the same parameters of the execute. I didn't include in the slides because the format doesn't fit. But if uh, when when a command have an interact uh, method but have auctions or arguments then the interactive mode started so if I run again then the system say ha ah, this is an interactive mode so now I will ask to the user uh, a human interface to say hey you need to provide the node ID in order to do something I say, ah now it's, it's not. and then we have auctions to try to, to do something like a combo box to try to provide a, a a group of auctions you you could do, you could choose. Okay, and then, and this is another um, note. Consequat es puto paulatin. Okay. Uh, okay, but this is about this is about yeah. models and what I and but you could create commands that were outside Drupal. This is possible, right? But beyond that, exactly as the Drupal launcher. But beyond that, maybe could be a good idea for companies or for people to create commands that live outside Drupal. Because this could be good to try to share commands between our Drupal installations without having the necessity to install a Drupal model, right? Because maybe you don't want to see in the UI or interface, or that this is something that could happen behind the scenes. So imagine if you are a, a software as a service like Pantheon or Akia, right? So if you if you could generate global commands, that means your user they will have the same Drupal interface as everybody do, and if you want to inclu include commands, they are included in library without the need to, to have some disabled models that maybe the client will say, what is this? And then you need to say, oh, this is internal, but ignore that. So when you say something like uh, ignore that, it's because you are not doing the things properly. So you need to do something behind the scenes. Everything needs to remain behind the scenes, right? So nothing need to do. So the way we do that is we enable this inside Symfony packages or libraries. <clears throat> so what we do is you you need to create your libraries and you need to, to define a type which is Drupal console library okay and inside that uh, library you in the service you need to say this is a Drupal command and the second is an, an auction will be released later could say this command will be able even if Drupal is not installed this command will be able but right now right now today tonight it's not available but in two weeks will be but the first part yes so imagine you are in your site <coughs> and you could you want to install an, another dependency uh, we create an example for do that so <coughs> If I run this, I will don't get because I already downloaded it. But let me execute this. So th this will say to composer, hey, I want to download this library, and this library contain um, commands. They will be check it out. Uh, actually, he is updating to the 0 0.2. Maybe Jesus did something tonight. To yesterday, I didn't notice. Okay, so he's updating, and now we have a library inside my Drupal. That means if I go to the vendor folder inside my Drupal, and you see here, 
this is uh, maybe it's not but this is a folder Drupal extend example and inside this we have two commands we have extend extend example one and we have extend example two so those commands they live inside our library but not inside my Drupal site so you have 100 sites because you are a hosting provider you just create one library and when you are installing your Drupal just include that library and then immediately the, those commands will be available for all Drupal installed without affecting the logic or visually what it is in, in, in my Drupal so this is this is all thinking about to try to improve your DevOps or your deploying um, logic or whatever you want. So it's, it's just us to try to think in advance because obviously we, we couldn't detect what is inside your company. Okay. So uh, also if you want to include this library as a dev, dev environment because this, this is something that maybe could create commands that only works or only will be necessary meanwhile you are in development. When you are going to put in production, maybe you need to rip up this for the reason you could say, hey, this is only for dev. When you push into production, this library will not be present anymore. Okay, so in theory, I mean, if everything were now we have two commands that is start with stent so if I run Drupal list stent uh, Drupal Drupal list stent now we have extend example 1 and extend example 2 so now I could run And now our commands that are working glo uh, not globally, but in, in a library without a, a team or without a model. But when we finished it, now we said, why we don't do this a little more far, right? What about if we want to have commands that not that, that don't live in a model or a team, that don't live in a library, but are a uh, global system available? To do that, we create a project, now name it console extent. So what happened is when I at the beginning I say when you run Drupal in it, let me let me run here. When we run Drupal in it, the first thing they ask is where do you want to store the files of, uh, or and those files are used in many ways. One of the ways is for configuration. So you could choose in slash etc console or inside your home or inside your folder. But if you, in the folder of the Drupal installation. So the first two is, is especially good to try to, to do commands that works in your, in your server globally. For this reason, this tradition said, if you go to your console folder, and you run this composer, this will be start a library that will allow later to detect libraries with commands to be installed globally. Make sense? This is like a helper. So this library don't do anything by itself. It's just their architecture. So you install this and then they say, okay, now start to create commands globally and this library will allow to do that. So if I go, to my folder, in this case, choo, 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 choo. I, I already downloaded, believe me, this is the same output uh, for the other command. And this is a Symfony 2 application again, uh, with some auto-loading process to inform the Drupal launcher that these commands are available. <coughs> so after create that, you could create commands. Um, you could create co global commands using this example. So this is a library which is already registered in packages. If you if you if you try to look this in 
So this is Drupal console standard example. It's in packages. And if you want to create your own commands to be available globally, just go to GitHub, fork this repository, and replace the command. So in this case, we have a command. Uh, no, no, this is console, yeah. This is console standard sample. Uh, is, is this similar of the other? So it's the same code because at, at the end, all of three, globally, library, or module, is the same class because we don't want to have different version of class to do something. But if you pay attention later, or no, you pay attention before, when I filter the commands by extend, you see this command, extend global. This is one command I create by myself, forking the other example just to, just to prove that you don't need to you don't need to uh, install a module to, to have this command. And remember, I am outside Drupal. So this command, in this case, is, is global. So I say global, boom, and this is my Drupal. So now you have these commands, and now this is in this server, in this architecture. These are commands that you don't need to even run a composer to do this. They are available in, in all places. And, in, in, and with this, you could create more solid uh, infrastructure for your deployment or your hosting or, the, or your development process. Okay, but we weren't really happy on this point. We want to do something more creative. So we say, okay, now we have a bunch of, of commands in, inside modules, inside library, and inside global. But when, when you are working in, in, in deployment or development or in a product development, you have a lot of different things that maybe need to occur in some sequence, right? So we call that a chain. So your recipe to do something that you want to, like a, a red button for a Donald Trump you know, to destroy the world, the same. But in, in our case, it's to build something. So you click this button, and then a lot of amazing things is gonna happen. And we call this chain command. So chain commands is just an, a recipe in YAML file to a, set, to a set to be called commands using placeholder, using environment variables, and also could be registers are, as commands. So when we run the Drupal init, one of the files created are some examples about how to, how to execute a chain. If I review this file, this is a console command create data. So this is just a command to say, okay, what commands I want to execute? This we say, okay, we want to execute the command to create five users, and these are the options. Later, I want to create some vocabularies, and later we want to create some notes, because this is a, just an example recipe. But remember, you could call all the commands available in the system, globally, library, or in a model. So how you execute this? You just need to copy this. Uh, oh, sorry, I need to be I need to be in a contest where I could execute. Now all commands are executed in sequence. This is only for create taxonomies user and this, but but I always use this example. So imagine your company is specialized in some vertical. Maybe your your vertical are create websites for drugstore or pharmacy. I don't know what is the proper word here. So you know what models you need to do, what forms you need to do, what everything you need to do, and most of this knowledge is inside the brain of someone, right? So you train these people, is, is this why people say you are specialized in education, healthcare, whatever, right? Because these people know a little bit the business and when they see the requirement, then they drag and drop, click here, click here, and that. But the problem is when you get a new contract, 
if this person is sick, then you, your project is a delay because you don't transfer that inside a, a, a recipe. So one action you could do is you could use the generator to, you, to generate the content, the form, the modules you want to generate, um, put that as a chain, and when you get a new contract, everything is created. So maybe at the beginning you could say, okay, but change for generator or something could be a little difficult because you need to type a lot. But remember, <coughs> remember we have um, this command, with this auction. In any command, we have, for instance, we have a execute. Uh, what is the, what is the, I remember, I forget. Uh, help. Okay. Okay, this is working. Uh, argument options. Pin. So we are executing an ls here, right? So now imagine I can execute a generator and you are doing step by step, right? With the interactive mode. But if I say generate in line and then generate chain, those two options are going to execute the command and at the end they say, okay, if you want to execute this command again, you just copy this and you execute in line. So what I just did. But if you want to include this command in a chain, just copy this in your chain and that's it. So what you need to say to your people when you create a project in a vertical, you say anything you are trying to do, trying to do with the console as, as possible, using generate change and save in this chain. So maybe two or three weeks in the future, you will get a huge change that maybe will cover 80% of the development required to do this specific type of vertical. Maybe it's not perfect, but with two, three, or four iterations, this change will be a little gather better and better, and you can execute. See, this is, and, and we have execution to try to call some stuff like a execute ground or execute composer or execute something, and maybe things that couldn't, couldn't be generated, all you need to do is you using the UI to change the configuration and we have commands for configuration management so you just need to export the configuration save in some git repository and then run a command in the chain to import the configuration to get the things downloaded right so it sounds a little complex but that's been maybe in a project you spend maybe usually two months maybe you will spend a, a, a week and then you will have more time to go to iceland for a drupal camp because you have no free time I am not saying I am doing this, right? <laughs> no. Okay. So this is this is this is. Mm -hmm. uh, it's because we have another feature that if you put learning in some commands, we include some human description about what happened, like uh, to try to understand what is what is going on. Um, we, we, all the logic behind this is because I don't, we, we, for the last 40 years, we always learn and we usually learn using reverse engineering, right? And not because we are doing all that always is not the proper way to do. So the generation is a way to learn, to try to like, you want to learn something, you use a interactive mode, you get an output, but, the, but at least this output is close to whatever you want and then you can learn from there. With learning, we are saying it's like a, you could take a junior to say, hey, you want to generate a routine? Use the console, generate that, and you use learning, and then you say, okay, a routine is a process where you get the URL, blah, 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 blah. So he is, the, that is plain in human. So not all commands that have, but some of them. And if you use that in combination, because Drupal console could be used in 18 languages, Dutch is not one of them, but a little French is one of them. So you could say, a junior guy, learn how to use the commands 
Don't spend three days understanding what is the foreign API in Drupal. Use the generate for API and learn from that. So this is more proactive and it's good for the companies because will it be reduced the time of onboarding? Uh, because we don't hire we don't hire people because they don't have experience. And when we hire, we need to maybe take some time for the most expensive developer to try to train these new people. So after three months, this this new guy doesn't advance <laughs> too much because he don't have enough mentoring. So the idea with these tools at least, he will be proactive and maybe he will be giving a value to the company. The new guy will be feel better with himself, productive, and the company will be happy with them and don't spell him in the third day because he's not doing anything. Right? So the idea is try to fill the gaps. This is really, really important in, in non-English non speaking countries. Like here you could understand, uh, but if you go to China, and we have the Drupal console in China when I was there, and then I just play in English, and I say, oh, wait a second. Then I switch to Chinese, and then I show this in Chinese, and they say, oh, because it's not the same when you uh, when you try to explain something in his mother tongue, and this is valuable for them. Um, because in my configuration is like that, but you could uh, let me show you. Uh, this is the global, sorry, but in the other configuration I have true. You say this? No, doesn't work. Okay. Okay, so, but you could execute, you could create change with placeholders. So that's mean you could execute a command and then we say if the user doesn't provide use by auctions the placeholder, we will use those values uh, as, as default. And then the command will be executed. But even better, you we could execute change using environmental variables. So that's mean maybe thinking, thinking in a in a scenario where you are trying to create a software as a service, um, you create a service to provide hosting to pharmacies, and then you put in a chain all the whole logic, right? And maybe your system is growing, and then you. And then you put this recipe inside something like a AWS. So you start a new service. You you put some environment variables to create a new instance of the service, and then you execute a chain using taking these environment variables, and then you your your recipe will be executed alone with all this thing. So this this command is thinking to try to to create something that could be grow grow and fast and be adaptable to what situation you have. Like a son, like a Drupal could be installed in Postgres, MySQL, or, or SQLite. So maybe you could take a decision like, hey, we will create a new instance, but in this case, we will use SQLite because we'll be on a small instance for AWS because we will only want 50 servers or something like that. Depend on, depend on what this business decision you need to take. Uh, and if you don't like the idea of having the the command uh, be called by the path of the file, you could always to, 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 let me find my command um, here in uh, where where I put this ah sorry. I will say console chain create data and I am going to copy this no 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 I 
can miss this. Is here? I don't, I don't remember. No, no, no. I did it in the wrong place. Sorry. It's inside the console. Chain. Create data. So this is the chain I executed before. And I am going to. Uh, why is not my? Okay. I am putting some info extra information inside my chain. In this case, it's create to me data. Now, if I run Drupal list create, I have the normal commands. We have the console, but now we have this new command, which is not a command alone. is 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 a command in a chain. So I can call Drupal create do me data. So what is better, now you have a command, right? So you could create a bigger chain to code another command, which in reality is another chain. So you could simplify to have, in theory, 10 line change, but in reality, it's like a 500 commands running in sequence to do something. Um, but this is how I do that. If you are interested in creating your own commands inside the core of the Drupal console, there are some examples if you don't want to use generator. Uh, there are commands that are container aware. That means they are they could they are aware about the Drupal container. So we need to use a different trait to be able to access the container. And as I say many times, Drupal console is a Symfony 2 application. If you are familiar with Symfony 2 application, if you want to contribute to this project. Please help us. Uh, in, uh, in the difference, I know how hard it is to contribute to Drupal. You know, the long time to delay. So we are not that special. So we believe in all contributions are more than welcome. If you follow some standards and if your code works, you are in. So it's simple, right? So you have any question? So again, my Twitter handle and GitHub is N Solutions, or WeNode, or a Drupal console. If you hate the Drupal console, please tweak. I hate this because this is an opportunity to grow up and to ban you. <laughs> and but if you love and you need to want to share the love, please say public. And remember to vote next month and maybe think to try uh, in both for me, right? So you have any question? Let me know. Yeah, th th this, this, those were error are because the dependencies. Um, as I said at the beginning, <laughs> we are still in Symfony 2, and it's the same problem when you are trying to change from 8.2 to 8.3 with, with going major, no, no, this is minor version. There are a lot of changes, and most of the changes are about dependency. This is it's really hard to try to avoid those. So the best option is delete the launcher and install again. This, this, there is, there is no other way to fix that. Sorry <laughs> about that. Yep. You don't have a question? No, you? No. Oh, okay. I, I don't. don't. Uh, Um, obviously, this is a lot of similarity, but remember, we create this because we want to bring the, the good things in Symfony developer they have with Symfony console. So we start only with generators, but um, 
when we evolve, we we need a lot of commands to try to test what we did before Jupyter even was related. So we start to create some commands. So for this reason, there are like a the intersection is about twenty percent of our commands, but not more than that. The the rest of eighty percent are some totally different st stuff. There are there are many things that just do that we we don't think we need to include because it's not related with commands we already have inside. Um, we are evolving in the way we need we want to use Drupal 8. So like a, what I explained here is is we want to be a tool to be able in the whole process in a development process in a company, right? Um, maybe maybe we have we have commands for code generation. We have command for sysadmin. We have command for debugging about our, our system, right? It's, it's, it, because it's exactly what a developer do. A developer does not only code. So you need to debug, you need to test it, you need to deploy, you need to do a lot of stuff. So our roadmap is in that direction. And if some functions are required and we will create, we will do. But it's not, we, we actually are more um, concerned about the new features in Symfony console and another consoles like uh, in Laravel, they have a tool. I guess it's Artisan. I guess yeah, this is it's awesome. They do some stuff. Case I say, okay, I need I need two extra months <laughs> in the year to try to do this uh, because I think we need to see outside what is happening to try to do this. But of course, this is an intersection. It's not intentional. It's just. We, uh, we want to do this because we need to do this because it's necessary for our project. Mm -hmm. Nope. Ah, sorry, I can't hear you. Um, not really. Actually, Composer is going to install installation profiles. Uh, it's again, it's a it's a intersection about uh, between both, but the real replacement for Drupal profile is Composer because Composer allows you to create all this kind of recipe. For the reason, when I explain you how to install Drupal, they have a recipe to do that. So, in this recipe, you they already could include module download and everything and activation. It's exactly what the profile do uh, because. I don't know if you if you see, but now we have a, a Drupal have their own packages repository, so all modules are them are available to do composer require um, let's say admin toolbar, and then the module will be left as a dependency. I don't know really will be al already downloaded in your system, and this is exactly what a profile do with the advantage that. You don't need to download a huge zip file in your system, so you just need to run one time and they will do that. But Composer is the natural replacement for profiles, but maybe we will see that in Drupal 9. I, I don't see, we are still one need to, to be familiar with Composer in Drupal 8 in, in, in whole our community. Mm -hmm. All commands could be executed remotely. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, that in Drush, you have the possibility to, uh, to run commands on aliases uh, on remote databases. So something like that uh, is also possible with, uh, with console. In all commands, you have the option to define the target. Um, we have a command to define a site, um, um, like a configuration for remote sites. We have a command for that. So it's like a, 
in this with this command you define a file and in this file you could define things like a SSH key URL whatever and then you just say okay I am going to use this target to generate this code uh, obviously in the in the server Drupal console must exist and they are connected using a library in, Sym in, in Symfony and then the command is execute remotely and execute directly but is this is all commands could do that uh, you could, for um, platform for instance they support Drupal console you already could do that um, in Pantheon I heard they are working in something to enable that because all you need to do that is the server has to allow to connect to the SSH port to do that so it's, it's not a Drupal console limitation Anything else? Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.